Welcome everyone to the Medical Device Commercialisation Training Program Graduation and Showcase for 2020. This is our very first virtual showcase um, and our first virtual cohort. I would like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners on the lands on which we gather here across, um, across this city and across the state and from where else you come from um, and pay my respects to Elders past, present and future. My name is Anne O'Neill and I'm a Director of Enterprise and International Partnerships in the Office for Health and Medical Research and a very, one of the very proud partners um, in this program. Um, I would like to just remind people um, of the rules of the, um, the showcase um, and hopefully you'll have a very enjoyable time as we were putting this together um, and learning a lot more about our um, cohort. I would like now to hand over to the CEO of the Cicada Innovations, uh, Sally Ann Williams. Over to you, Sally. Thanks, Sam, and a big warm welcome to everybody who is joining us live today. Um, before we get underway, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the traditional owners of the many lands in which we're meeting here today in the country now known as Australia. Today, I'm on Gadigal land and I want to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and their connections to land, sea and community and pay my respects and invite you all to, to join with me in paying our respects to their elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. At Cicada Innovations, our mission is to pioneer deep tech companies through incubation, capacity building, connections, and all the support startups and scale-ups need to solve the world's most pressing problems. Over the past 20 years, we've helped over 300 companies grow and develop their deep tech products and, and solutions and bring them to market, raising over $350 million in capital, generating over $370 million in value for businesses, consumers and society, and delivering way more than 2,600 STEM jobs in, in New South Wales. The impact goes on and on, but it's impact that our entrepreneurs, our residents and our community couldn't achieve alone. It's only through collaboration with business, government and the community that we see solutions to complex problems being identified, solutions being co-created and lasting value being delivered through commercialising science and technology. We've got a really long history with medtech companies at Cicada Innovations and a long-standing commitment to supporting capacity, the capacity building of our clinicians, researchers and communities in their journey. In collaboration with New South Wales Health and the Office of Health and Medical Research, we've helped hundreds of people through the suite of offerings in the Medical Device Commercialisation Training Program. MDCTP Core has seen the development of solutions such as an injectable scaffold for tissue injury, a remote monitoring device for pregnancy and labour progression, a device to visualise the tear film in real, real time for diseases in the eye. These are just some examples of the products that we've seen come to market through this program. The products are the foundation for solving global human health conditions and challenges and are an opportunity to build new industries in New South Wales, creating both jobs and economic outcomes, as well as having a really positive impact on human health. It's an absolute privilege to work so closely with New South Wales Health on, medical to, on the MDCTP program. And we really wanna thank them for their support and their, their work and their vision in bringing this to life. I want to extend a big thank you to Darmica for leading this important work at Cicada Innovations and the whole team involved in the program. And most of all, what I want to do tonight is wish our graduates the best of luck and many success. Good luck, graduates. Thank you so much, Sally. Um, it's now my very great uh, pleasure to introduce the next three speakers, the first of which is our Executive Director of the Office for Health and Medical Research, Dr Tony Penner. Um, and he's going to talk about the importance of the program to New South Wales Health and the medical research ecosystem. Um, we'll also um, be hearing from the Program Manager, Dharmika, who's already been mentioned, Dharmika Mystery, and uh, the Education Director of the program, Ben Wright who were pivotal in the delivery of the program. So now over to you, Tony. Great, thanks, Anne. I, I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land uh, and uh, on all the uh, places at which we're located across this uh, wonderful uh, Australia. And I also want to uh, pay my respects to the elders past and present and emerging. I also would also like to acknowledge our wonderful colleagues in Cicada, um, Sally Ann Williams, Chief Executive, my colleagues, 
in the Office for Health Medical Research, Anna Neal, Caitlin Pitt and Georgia Camp. And I'd also like to acknowledge the, the graduates from the program, past and clearly the present ones, and all your friends and colleagues. And I'm looking forward to uh, listening uh, to this, uh, uh, to the pictures that will be coming up soon. Um, look, in 2012, when the Medical De Devices Fund program started, we had no idea of the wonderful success that this program has brought to the uh, to the whole health uh, uh, health technology and medical device area in New South Wales. Um, it has generated an extraordinary amount of uh, interest in this whole space, and it was only two years later that the it was acknowledged that many of the players who came to the Medical Devices Fund looking for support um, had a lot of ideas, uh, but really had very little knowledge on how to commercialize and how to link in with clinicians, how to link in with customers, how to understand the regulatory pathway. And, and out of that, uh, we uh, created with, with Cicada, the Medical Device, Devices Commercialization Training Program. And that was in 2014. And it's been going quite strong since then. I think to date, they, they've raised 16 companies, $53 million worth of revenue and over 80 graduates, not including the ones this evening. The program is highly regarded. It, uh, it uh, generates 12 credit points to MBA at both Wollongong University of New South Wales. It really spawned really the whole idea that, that, that um, in translating from um, a problem to a concept to evidence uh, into practice, is a journey that is that needs to be undertaken by all of us who are looking to improve the health system, and and having the right teams right at the beginning is absolutely critical. And this is one of the learnings that the medical devices commercialisation training program has really uh, brought to bear. And we've recognised that in the way that uh, um, the uh, the the program has developed over the years. Um, and I'm so appreciative of, of the work that both Cicada um, and in particular Anne and Ben over the years have really um, um, improved the program. It certainly uh, put medical devices on the map along with the other major uh, translation pathway uh, and that's clinical trials. So look, I um, congratulate the um, successful um, uh, uh, graduates um, uh, this has certainly been a, I know, I, uh, I know that it's a very demanding 12 week course um, and for you to complete it um, is, uh, is worthy in itself, but for you to take away the learnings, in fact, uh, to assist you in the commercialization of your product, I think is even more important. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to listening to your pitches and uh, uh, and, and to be honest, I don't know what I'm going to hear. So this is going to be an exciting time for me. So um, I'm now going to introduce Dharmika, who will take over from me just to say a few words about the program. Thank you, Dr. Penner. As you can imagine, this year MDCTP was more challenging than ever because halfway through the course, the global pandemic hit and on very short notice, we had to pivot to an online only medium. And it was a real learning experience, not just for the graduates, but also for Ben and I. Um, I have to say I was hugely impressed by our graduates because the tenacity and dedication they put to seeing the program through um, and taking each hurdle within their stride was, was really well done. So once again, everyone, well done. Um, for everyone listening out there, the MDCTP is aimed at researchers and clinicians who have a great idea for a technology, but may not have the commercial experience to take it to market. Together with our mentors, we arm our cohort with the knowledge that they need and place them in situations where they can apply what they learn in real circumstances. The vision of the MDCTP is to fill that knowledge gap between research and commercialization, which is really vital to getting medical innovation off the ground and benefiting society. So it's been 12 weeks of intensive and immersive learning. Every graduate here tonight has had their idea pressure tested, their thinking and perspectives stretched, and they've all come out with a new range of skills. And they've already come so far from where they've started. And it's been a real privilege to support their journey. And I hope that their learnings will be lifelong um, because that's what the MDCTP does. It carries on through the years to come. 
really proud of them. I wish them the very best as they move forward and I remind them that Daughters to Carter Innovations is always open. Uh, this is a New South Wales Health Initiative um, and I have to say the office have given us great support, uh, not during just this cohort, but over the last six years. We cannot thank them enough. But the program is also not possible without all of our guest speakers and award partners who have been really generous with their time, their expertise and their support. So I'd like to thank everybody who was involved and I want them to know that their impact is lasting. You'll be hearing from the cohort shortly. Uh, I just want to say that due to the one hour time slot, you'll be seeing a very condensed version of their pitches. The longer version will be available after this event, so stay with us to hear more about how you can follow up um, on the technologies that you're interested in. To everyone listening tonight, you have a role to play. There will be a People's Choice poll where you'll get to vote for the pitch that you find most compelling. When the time comes, the Cicada team will be sharing the link in the Zoom chat function. So please make sure you take a note um, of the pictures over the next few minutes so that you can pick your favorite. I'm now gonna hand over to Ben, our education director. Um, he's been running the MDCTP for the last six years. And I just wanna say to him as well, a big thank you for your support and input into this valuable program. Over to you, Ben. Thanks, Monica. Uh, this year we graduate 12 exceptional individuals with a passion for translating or translational impact. They join 80 of their peers as MDCTP alumni and the really the future of Australian medical technology and medical technology industry. These are clinicians, researchers and entrepreneurs who will build a new industry in an ever uncertain world. Their passion for solving big problems their innovation and their grit are what we celebrate this afternoon. Uh, throughout the last six years, we've seen graduates developing active massage sleeves for lymphedema sufferers. Uh, as Tony said, monitoring for neonatal distress during birth to prevent needless intervention, new bone scaffolds for dental and orthopedic applications, novel, more precise radiotherapy systems to improve patient outcomes, focal laser systems to ablate prostate tumors without side effects, diagnostics for antibiotic stewardship and digital platforms to address the underserved needs in mental health. There are now new innovative products in the market and numerous clinical trials underway. As a result of this program, enabled by the support of New South Wales Health and more than $50 million in capital that's been raised by graduates to commercialize their ideas. It's been my absolute privilege to serve these individuals through delivering MDCTP for the past six years and to work alongside people like Anne O'Neill, Antonio Penna, Caitlin Pitt and Dharmika Mystery. This cohort has experienced some real challenges during the pandemic uh, with the 12 week program shifting 100% online from about week six. Key stakeholders, so they are users, choosers, payers, evangelists and blockers, have become much harder to access and open critical debate during contact sessions for the cohort was harder to manage over video chat. But I don't think any of the graduates today missed a beat and I'm incredibly proud of the progress that they've all made. We'll now watch a short video that will give you a taste of the MDCTP journey. training program teaches our inventors, innovators, and also investors how to engage with the health systems as customers, as consumers, and also in the co-design of the medical device. I'm really proud of the Office of Health, health and Medical Research team led by Anne O'Neill in the way that they've continually given advice to the trainees during the program and post program. We knew that there was a wealth of talent in the New South Wales ecosystem. We just had to find it, develop it and let them go. And that's what this program does. The outcomes of the program have been extraordinary. It was immediately successful out of the gate in 2014. And since that time, we've had over 80 graduates. They have set up 16 companies and raised over 50 million in capital. So the program is actually very intensive, immersive, and allows the students to apply their learnings in real time, and that allows them to learn really exponentially. Entrepreneurship is a knowledge base, 
and a skill that is rarely developed in clinical and academic education. So the MDCTP fills that gap and enables clinicians and academics to understand entrepreneurial pathways and achieve real world impact with their technologies. The most challenging aspect of the program for me was being flexible and adapting my way of thinking and my way of looking at problems. MDCTP was a really great experience for me. It allowed me coming out of university to work with a whole range of individuals in the medtech industry. I was really interested to understand all the processes that happen in the peripheral. The regulatory approval process, the clinical trials, it really taught me to think more like a businesswoman. It forces you to go out there and talk to clinicians and people that would be the end user of what you're doing. The level of the course is quite outstanding, you know, there's no better place to learn how to commercialise your work. When we're looking for participants for the MDCTP, we're looking for passion, a novel technology, a tolerance for risk, and an intent to commercialise. And what we've developed within New South Wales is a capability, but also a community of like-minded individuals who are intent on changing healthcare. The community that we built uh, is just amazing. Being able to bounce ideas on people that are going through the same journey that I'm going through, these are friends that I'm gonna keep for the rest of my life. This course allowed me to be able to translate what I was doing from lab bench to bedside. And for me, that's quite a powerful thing to be able to do. If you are really passionate about what you're working on, if you really want to help people, commercialization is such an important part of that. It takes 10 years to get from the research lab out to practice, and sometimes even longer. And this actually gives us some skills and some networks to actually start to think about how we can accelerate that process, which is critical. To my graduates, I want to say and it's been my pleasure to watch them grow and learn during this journey. I personally am incredibly proud of this cohort. They're our first virtual cohort under the current circumstances. We were doubtful whether or not this would happen this year, yet they've graduated, they've done us incredibly proud, and we know that they're going to go from strength to strength. Congratulations. Thank you very much. That was um, a really wonderful overview of what this um, group has achieved. And thank you to Tony, Dharmika and Ben for, for their words. Now to the main event, our 2020 cohort for the program. You'll see between three and four pictures in, in blocks, um, about one minute long, which Dharmika has already explained. And Dharmika will also follow up with some questions, live questions for the, for the graduates. Now, don't forget, this is an opportunity for you to pick a favourite. Um, your favourite pitch, your favourite person, your favourite technology, and we'll put the, uh, the voting uh, instructions in the Zoom chat um, at the end of all the pitches. So I'm now going to hand over to, oh, sorry, I have forgotten. There is first um, some graduate pitches before handing over to Dharmika, and we'll start now. Hi, I'm Kiri Bella. And I'm Bean Irma. And, and together, together we're Say 66. Our goal is to make speech therapy accessible to children everywhere so that no child is left behind in life because of their speech difficulties. Currently, over 50% of children don't get access to treatment. Of those who do, the majority don't get the doses that they need to accelerate their learning due to the high costs and the shortages of speech pathologists. This leaves them at high risk for poor social, educational and later job outcomes. We have developed a clinically validated solution co-designed with children that uses interactive video games and AI-based real-time feedback so they can complete therapy at home. It allows speech pathologists to remotely monitor their children's progress and adjust therapy exercises, thus increasing speech pathology capacity. Say 66 is a game changer in speech therapy. Let's get playing. Hi, 
My name is Alessandro Simeoli. I am a critical care helicopter paramedic and I'm introducing ETHOM. ETHOM is a medical device that measures the level of oxygenation of critically ill patients prior to rapid sequence intubation, which is a procedure that consists in the administration of a general anesthetic followed by the insertion of a breathing tube into the patient trachea. Recent studies have highlighted that clinicians don't properly pre-oxygenate the patient prior to intubation, which can lead to low oxygen level, low blood pressure, and even cardiac arrest. The technology behind ETHOM has been used in operating theater for decades. However, we now want to make it available in a compact form for the pre-hospital and emergency department setting as well. ETHOM will allow paramedics and doctors to determine when it is safe to intubate the patient while also reducing the level of stress associated with this high-risk procedure. Thank you. I'm Jason Fairclough, I'm a physiotherapist and founder of Kangaroo MedTech. So every year about 6,000 Australians sustain broken and dislocated fingers from everything such as bicycle accidents as well as contact sports and ball sports and also including work injuries. So a common management for these is to put wires, plates and screws in the body. But there's a complication rate that comes with these at about 20% including infections, as well as stiffness and loss of function. Each admission to hospital is about $5,000, so it's a cost to the healthcare system. We looked at another way to manage these, and we call it butterfly skin traction. It's a device that puts fractures back into place and maintains them in an ideal tension so that we can minimise the need for or the impact of surgery. And clinical results are showing some good outcomes with faster recovery times as well as less complications. We're only charging about $150 per unit, including training, so we're hoping to make this an option available to all Australians. My name is Jonathan, representing SoundSense. Can you imagine waking up one morning and not being able to see? This is the everyday reality for millions of people who don't have sight to rely on for things that we take for granted. So it's our goal to give independence and agency by allowing people with blindness the ability to see the world with sound. SoundSense is a wearable device that fits depth sensors into the frame of a pair of glasses. It converts a live 3D video of what's in front of the user into spatial audio via an embedded processor. It allows the user to listen to a soundscape of their environment. You can think of it as echolocation, but made simple. This market is expected to double within the next decade. Yet we are unique to our competitors in that our solution is discreet, requires minimal training, and is scalable as a platform. It is the perfect complement to both the cane and the guide dog. So help us create the next generation of blindness assistive technologies. Help us paint the world with sound. Thank you. So thank you to our first set of presenters from the cohort. Today we have the wider ecosystem listening to all of you um, and it's a really good chance to hear what the graduates need to progress their innovation further. So I'm going to go around and we're going to ask, our, ask them for their ask basically. So I'm going to start with Kira and, uh, Kiri and Bina from C66. How can everyone help you to save speech, ladies? Thanks, Dharmika. We are looking for people with business or marketing expertise to join our team. And we're also looking for people with knowledge of the digital or telehealth sector to join and guide our Say 66 journey. We're also needing access to New South Wales health channels to help families who are having difficulty accessing speech pathology get that access, particularly in these COVID-19 times. We're also looking to partner with New South Wales health and US channels. Uh, for future clinical trials. Thank you, ladies. Alessandro, how can the community help this paramedic to, the paramedic to save more lives? Hi, Hall, and thank you for joining in and supporting us. My ask tonight is quite simple. I'm looking to partner with an experienced biomedical engineer so we can move into the design phase of ETHOM and together build a prototype and conduct clinical testing. So if you're interested in this space, please reach out so we can work together to increase the safety of critical ear patients undergoing intubation. Thank you very much to all. 
Fantastic. Thank you, Jason. Let's hear what you need a hand with for your next steps with the butterfly skin traction. Uh, well, um, thanks to New South Wales Health for their um, investment and innovation. We're really looking at getting, uh, providing a return of investment of that. So having a market ready kit is what we've progressed to. And what I'm looking for is help with the marketing as well as the supply of materials as well as, tra as training to New South Wales Health facilities. Thank you, Jason. And Jonathan, helping the visually impaired to see through their ears is a tough gig. How can everyone help you to bring sound sense to life? Hi, Dharmika. Uh, we're looking for partnership from medical device developers that can help us with regulations, product pipelining, and manufacturing. So by partnering with SoundSense, you'll be enabling us to develop the next generation of blindness assistive technologies to enable the blind and visually impaired to regain their independence and agency to see the world with sound. Thank you. For those of you who feel that you may be able to help our graduates in any way, we will be sharing a link later um, via the Zoom chat, which will allow you to connect to them. So watch out for this. We're going to now hear from another four graduates. Hi, I am Nafise, a biomedical engineer and PhD candidate in Western Sydney University. Our technology, Clearview, is a disposable and wearable nanoendoscope that can identify abnormalities in gastroesophageal reflux diseases patients. Currently, these abnormalities are speculated but not observed in humans. Our technology can give certainty to gastroenterologists and surgeons about the exact cause of diseases and help them plan a proper treatment approach. Our aim is to improve symptoms and the quality of life in the patients with esophageal disorders and prevent more complicated conditions such as esophageal adenocarcinoma. Thank you. Parkinson's disease is an insidious degenerative disorder which breaks down a person's ability to complete fine motor control. It eventuates in debilitating symptoms, including difficulties in sleep, speech, and even cognition. In animal models of this disease, we've been able to demonstrate that red to near infrared light when shone on the body is able to protect the brain from Parkinsonian-like damage. There is currently no efficacious treatment which is able to slow this insidious disease. Neurospec's aim is to evaluate this technology to allow patients to utilise it within their own homes to slow this degenerative process, thus giving patients back the control over their bodies that they deserve. Every year, more than 200,000 patients suffering from chronic lung disease wait nervously for test results, which may mean they'll have to endure a highly toxic antibiotic treatment. Unfortunately, they may need to wait months to find this answer. I'm Dr. Nicole Hasick, a senior scientist at Speedex. Here, we're developing a world-first diagnostic test that can provide this answer in less than four hours. Debilitating illnesses such as cystic fibrosis leave patients susceptible to mycobacterial lung infections that can be highly resistant to antibiotic treatment. Doctors routinely test their patients to monitor for these infections, but they cannot begin treatment without first confirming a diagnosis. Current testing is slow and unreliable, and Speedex aims to revolutionize this diagnostic pathway by introducing sensitive and specific tests that can dramatically speed up the time until detection. This provides clinicians with actionable information in weeks rather than months and allows patients to get the right treatment at the right time. The age of digital devices and extended screen time is putting an unprecedented strain on our eyes, leaving 20% of Australians with sore and irritating dry eye symptoms. Dry eye syndrome is severely undermanaged, with many Australians discontinuing therapy despite the risk of long-term and irreversible damage to their eyes. 
My name is Robert Walker and I've collaborated with Australia's leading ophthalmic researchers to combat widespread non-compliance to dry eye medication. Our team at Oculence is developing the Dry Eye Digital Health App, an educational tool that guides dry eye patients through effective strategies to successfully self-manage their eye condition. It is our hope that the Dry Eye app will enable more patients to take advantage of their condition and get back to a productive and pain-free life. At Oculence, we believe that digital health can open a door to impactful healthcare that all individuals deserve. Thank you to our graduates. We'll get right into the R's. So Nafiseh, how can the community help Clearview become a reality? Hi. To date, we have developed part of our first device prototype. We are now focusing on our research and generating clinical data to commercialize Clearview. We are asking you to help us to develop our uh, device prototype further and guide us to be on the right path and get prepared for the TGA approval. Thank you. Thank you, fabulous. Luke, what's your ask to everyone in your fight against Parkinson's disease? Thanks, Damika. Uh, I'm seeking a practicing neurologist uh, who is passionate about the lack of efficacious disease altering treatment in the fight against Parkinson's disease to assist my team in designing a scientifically robust clinical trial for Neurospec's device. I'm also looking for an engineer with experience in optic device development to assist me in creating an optimized product for the specific needs of people with Parkinson's to undertake treatment easily in their own homes. I'm enthusiastic to work with you to try and slow this debilitating disease and give people with Parkinson's back control. Excellent. Nicole, what do you need to get Resistance Plus out there in the war against antibiotic resistance? Hi, uh, so we're currently looking for clinical partners that are interested in being a part of our clinical trials and who also have, have access to patient samples. Mm -hmm. And we're planning to conduct these clinical trials at multiple sites within Australia, Europe and the US. And so we're looking for introductions to anyone working with cystic fibrosis or NTM lung disease. Fantastic, thank you. And Robert, all eyes on you. What is your ask for Oculence today? Hi. Um, so my ask today is for expressions of interest uh, from potential industry partners who would like to know more about our clinical developments as we approach our upcoming pilot software release. Fabulous. So for everyone listening again, one more time, we'll be sharing links in the Zoom chat, which will allow you to connect with the graduates that you're really interested in. We're now going to hear from our final three graduates for the afternoon. Hi, I'm Ricky O'Brien and my product is Motion Scan. Each year in Australia, more than $3 billion worth of joint replacement surgeries are performed on more than 120,000 patients. These patients have limited options available to delay the progression of the disease. During their treatment, they have conventional CT scans where they're required to remain stationary. But that's not how your knee hurts. It hurts when you walk, it hurts when you put weight on it and it hurts when you move because you dynamically load and unload your knee as you're walking. Motion scan will enable us to image a moving knee as the patient walks to determine the joint spacing, the loading and force distribution within the knee itself. This will allow us to determine if early interventions such as a knee reconstruction or a knee brace are working before it's too late for the patient. I'm currently developing a prototype device to test its efficacy in clinical trials before launching a product in Australia and then globally. Hi, I'm Sarah from the Black Dog Institute. We know that mental illness starts with signal changes in the brain. Current treatment relies on our own awareness and self-reporting. In partnership with Deakin University, the Black Dog Institute has developed a new platform to help relieve the significant burden that mental illness places on 20% of Australians or one in five people in any given year. Our platform leverages technology that is ever present, your smartphone and wearable devices. Driven by machine learning, we analyse phone sensor, behavioural signals and user-generated data to extract patterns to help explain and build our insight into disorders such as depression and anxiety. 
The INSTIL platform puts us firmly at the frontier of science and technology and at the forefront of preventative health. We know we're only at the beginning of this journey and have some big hurdles to establish clinical value and meet the trust and privacy goals. But we believe we're on the right path to building a mentally healthier world because every brain matters. One in five kidneys experiences delayed kidney function, the need for dialysis within seven days after transplantation. When the kidney is removed from ice and placed into the body before its blood supply has been restored, it begins to rewarm. This rise in temperature can damage the kidney, leading to this need for post-transplant dialysis. My name is Turab Khan, and through my PhD, I have developed the IIPJ the ischemic injury protective jacket that provides vital thermal protection during transplantation. Our kidney pajamas can keep the kidney below the safe temperature of 15 degrees Celsius for double the amount of time when compared to the industry standard. We aim to reduce the injury experienced by the kidney in order to increase short and long-term function, increase patient quality of life, reduce surgical complications due to time pressure, and reduce post-transplant treatment costs. Thank you to our final speakers. We're going to get back into the asks right away. Ricky, you're up first. What is it that you are looking for help with to get things in motion? Thanks, Darmika. At this stage, I'm looking at putting a team together to bring the product to market. So particularly interested in being introduced to people that have experience in the US and European imaging space, as well as clinical people that may end up becoming the leadership or the directors of the company in the long run. Thanks, Ricky. Sarah, how can the ecosystem help to instill change in the way that we manage and treat mental health? Thanks, Damika. Uh, we're looking to connect with research partners that are interested in accessing digital phenotype or sensing data technology to enhance their clinical trials and research. And we're also keen to collaborate with health service uh, organisations that have real clinical problems. They're interested in solving using this uh, digital mobile technology as well. Thank you. Fantastic. And last but not least, Tarab, we know that we should always invest in a good pair of pyjamas, but um, organ saving kidney pyjamas, that's something else. What can the community do to help you? Thanks so much, Lamaka. So we have currently obtained a provisional patent for insulating uh, any organ during transplantation and are now seeking help from a business partner with professional experience in raising capital, obtaining grant funding for medical device development and also require further help building our financial model. We would love to have you on board the IIPJ team and hope to revolutionize the organ transplantation industry together. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. So just another reminder to everybody out there, you can if you feel like you can help the graduates, um, we'll be sharing the link in the Zoom chat. Over to you, Anne. Thank you so much, Dharmika, and thank you, graduates. And I'm sure that there's a resounding wave of applause out there in the virtual land that we're operating in tonight. We hope that everyone enjoyed that and learned more about our cohort um, and the journey that they've been on to get to this point. So we hope you have a favorite and the polls are now open for the People's Choice Award. You just need to go into the Zoom chat and follow the link. Um, and just and you'll have two minutes. You'll have two minutes. This will be very fast and furious uh, to head to the website to vote. And so the more votes, the better. Um, but remain, remember, after you vote, please come back to this webinar. Um, after the two minutes are up, we'll have a few closing remarks from um, Ben Wright and also announce the winners um, of the, uh, the poll, which you all will no doubt want to hear. So go vote now. Are we allowed?
Okay. Uh, all graduates of the New South Wales Medical Device Commercialization Training Program were eligible for seven post-program awards sponsored by MDCTP, including the People's Choice Award. Uh, holistic assessment helped us select our awardees for 2020. And usually we'd present these in person, uh, but since we're using a new format this year, the awards have already been given out. I'd like to acknowledge the awardees and the award partners tonight. Uh, those awardees and award partners are Bina Ahmed, who received the Intellectual Property Award from Davies Colson Cave for Say 66. Jason Fairclough from Butterfly Skin Traction, who received the Design and Entrepreneurship Award from the IDE Group. Kiri Ballard from Say 66, who received a Commercial and Corporate Law Award from Addison's. Nicole Hasick from Speedex, who received the coveted Market Access Strategy Award from Value Based Access. And Sarah Holland from Black Dog, who received the Customer Strategy Development Award from Kairos Now. This year, Cicada Innovations also provided a sponsored incubation award to Jason Fairclough from Butterfly Skin Traction for incubation inside Cicada Innovations. I'd like to thank all the Office for Health and Medical Research for their awards and thank all our partners and congratulate the award recipients. And now the voting has closed for the People's Choice Awards and the results are in. The winner of the $1,000 cash prize for the People's Choice Award is awarded to Turab Khan. Congratulations, Turab. I'll now hand back the reins to Dharmika. Thank you, Ben. Congratulations, Turab. Well done. Uh, thank you to everyone who voted for the People's Choice Award. That was great. Um, some of you may have noticed that when we sent that, we also sent you uh, to a website. Uh, then that one has a couple of different things that allows you to do. So the first is the graduates have had a number of asks this evening. Um, and we really, uh, you know, I've said a number of times tonight, please do reach out and be generous with your support because it's really hard to innovate in a silo. We have this fantastic ecosystem of experts, business leaders, people that can help. Um, and I'm sure you're all listening. So to the audience, I ask you to please reach out to our graduates if you can help them with anything. It can be know-how, connections, or something that you could physically help them with. And we thank you in advance. Um, due to the webinar format, as I said earlier, this was just a one minute condensed pitch. And as we all know, these are complicated technologies. You can't fit them into one minute. It only tells you a tiny bit of the story. So we have a full three minute videos or pictures on that website that will give you more information about our graduates and their technologies. If you'd like to know a bit more about the MDCTP, you can download the digital brochure from the website, um, which has been put in the Zoom chat. We'll also be uploading a recording of this entire event uh, on YouTube. So you can forward it to people or rewatch it. Uh, please feel free to do so. And finally, as always with these sorts of events, we really love feedback so that we can make things better. So at the bottom of the page, you'll find a link uh, to a survey form. It's really, really short, we promise. Just please leave us, um, you know, a little bit of your feedback. And again, we thank you in advance. So I'm now going to hand back to Anne to wrap up. Thank you. Thank you, Dharmika. Um, and thank you to everyone who um, attended today's uh, uh, showcase. Uh, always challenging these times, but I think we're getting better at the technology and we really appreciate you um, participating. Thank you to the team at Cicada. We would not be able to deliver this program without you. We want to thank the mentors. Again, you provide such um, expertise and experience that um, go from strength to strength every year. The graduates, our first virtual cohort, we thank you for staying the course. And I'd also like to thank the team and echoing Tony's comments earlier at the Office for Health and Medical Research who have been on this journey with the graduates um, every single year. And that includes Tony, Caitlin Pitt and Georgia Can. Uh, thank you once again, everybody, and good night.